Are the ascending colors from red to violet in the chakra system a coincidence? Where else do we see this pattern in a linear fashion? And what does it mean to you when you learn that your spinal column has distinct and harmonic frequencies along its axis? The chakra system of the body is depicted as a vertical column of energy vortices. Each energy vortex has a frequency and an attributed color, such that the root energy vortex has a red color. This means that the frequency of the root chakra ranges between 405 to 480 cycles per second. As you climb up the cerebral spinal column, you can notice that other energy vortices are producing completely different colors, and thus a completely different frequency. The pattern one notices upon examination of the chart of the chakra system is that the colors, each of these seven chakras, are correlated with the range of colors found in the visible spectrum, with the root, or tailbone in red, and a systematic shift to orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, to finally violet at the top of the head. This ascending column of frequencies is no different than the ascending frequencies in the visible spectrum. This means that the entire energetic spectra of the biological energy systems is from 380 nanometers to 750 nanometers, basically from the top of the head to the tailbone, respectively. Each chakra is tuned to a distinct range of frequencies within its spectral domain, such that the root is typically red, the chest green, and the throat blue. When speaking about the energy vortices and their close association with distinct glands in the physical biological suit, each energy vortex has a distinct intelligence and a range of function. To simplify this idea, let's examine the glands and their range of function. The adrenal glands, which are associated with the solar plexus yellow chakra, are involved in several functions unique to their purpose. The adrenal glands are completely different in the range of functions compared to other glands, such as the thymus in the chest or gonads in the groin. If each gland has a distinct purpose and range of function, can we consider each gland as having their own center of intelligence? You, as a conscious person, are an intelligence one of which that has entered to animate its biological suit through its energetic system. In entering the physical avatar on the earthly dimensional plane of existence, your pure intelligence has entered the brain and descended the spinal axis. In the descent of your intelligence through the vertebrates, the entire chakra system comes alive. Each nerve plexus is powered up. Each powered up chakra is fulfilling a distinct and separate purpose than the others in an overall orchestration of operating the physical unit. Similar to how a light bulb turns on when energy fills it, the metaphysical chakra turns on when life force fills up the nerve plexus and its attributed glands. In that sense, the chakras are only a holographic representation of the glandular system. You can then visualize how energy, upon entering the thymus plexus region, for example, feeds the organ system with the force that the plexus then renders the energy into a specific color frequency for its unique regional function. Each gland and organ has a specific and unique function, distinct from others, which might explain why each plexus frequency is similarly distinct and different from other plexuses. If we are indeed beings of light with the capabilities of actualizing thought into either mechanical or psychokinetic force, then we must pause to ponder the reality in which we are radiating spectra of electromagnetic force. By becoming familiar with physics on electromagnetic radiation and the spectrum of light, one takes a crucial step towards self-mastery. You are an electromagnetic being playing with the electromagnetic spectrum.